you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, let me start uh, and return some of the generous compliments you were kind enough to direct toward me. Um, I am uh, very proud of this committee and very proud of what it's accomplished in the last uh, seven years, quite frankly. Didn't matter who was chairman, didn't matter who was president, didn't matter which party controlled the chamber. This bill got across the line. And the first four years, I was fortunate enough to be the chair. You were kind enough to support final passage on all four occasions. And uh, I was pleased to be able to do the same thing the last three years that you've been chair. So I, I know we know how to work together. And I want to also note um, the last three years, I couldn't have done that without the support of my ranking member, who's shown a great deal of interest and support in this, uh, this endeavor and contributed mightily. So, uh, Madam Ranking Member, thank you very much for all your help. Um, you know, even a guy can succeed when you're flanked by two uh, extraordinary women. And so uh, I, I appreciate both of you for your leadership and frankly for the manner in which you both work together for our committee. Because again, it's not just this bill that's gotten across the line, it's the other bills too. Um, Madam Chair, I want to congratulate you and your staff uh, for the Chairman's Mark. And I want to thank you for all the hearings we had. I thought we had an exceptional group of hearings, particularly given the abbreviated time frame we all had to work uh, because we, uh, you know, it took us a while to talk the rest of Congress in the good sense of passing our omnibus. But uh, uh, again, I, I commend both of you on that score. I, I always note we were ready to bargain when the Senate was not, and we always opted for the, the, the most aggressive timeline, and thank you for doing that, and I think had you not, we might we might be living under a CR today as opposed to having an omnibus. That wouldn't have been good for any of our shared priorities in this bill or across the entire uh, spectrum. Uh, I want to thank you for incorporating many of our shared priorities into this bill. You and I agree on the need uh, for continued investments in biomedical research, public health infrastructure, and preparing the nation for the next pandemic. We also agree on the importance of funding special education and programs like TRIO and Gear Up, which help first-generation students complete college and change the trajectory of their lives. Thank you for recognizing, again, the importance of those shared priorities and making sure that this uh, chairman's mark reflects them. You've also been fair in including community project funding requested by members from both sides of the aisle. I thank you for that as well and agree very much that I think that contributes uh, to the value of the bill and allows uh, members on both sides to play an important role in fashioning. Despite these many areas of agreement, um, I will at this point still be opposing the bill presented today. Right now, Americans are experiencing the highest inflation rates and consumer prices seen in four decades. Even more concerning, uh, in a recent report published by the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, I found that this um, inflation is unfortunately here to stay well into the 2023. So that, uh, that's a problem that I think we're going to have to address not only in this bill, but uh, probably in others as well. Additionally, a severe worker shortage still exists. In fact, according to the latest Bureau of Labor Statistics, job openings and labor um, turnover survey, small businesses are still looking to fill nearly 5.5 million job openings. Uh, that's nearly two job openings for one job seeker. Americans are struggling to feed their families, fill up their gas tanks, and pay their rent and mortgage. Yet the administration and my friends in the majority continue to ignore this crisis uh, and fuel in the inflation fire by proposing more spending in, uh, than we can uh, prudently afford at this point. Unemployment uh, was incentivized for far too long uh, by the administration, and the government spent too much on things unrelated to coronavirus response, in my view, in the American Rescue Plan. Yet this bill continues uh, in some ways to exacerbate those problems by pumping billions of dollars into additional spending into programs that cannot absorb it and creating new and controver uh, controversial programs uh, that uh, are bound to create differences between the two parties. Our economy simply cannot sustain this. Additionally, the bill once again removes longstanding bipartisan uh, amendments that have protected taxpayer dollars uh, from funding abortions or forcing health care professionals to form uh, and participate, excuse me, uh, from participating in abortions. I want to really underline that point. 
Uh, we tried to make that to our friends. Uh, we understand and respect your opinion, but this is a long-standing compromise that both parties forged. And while my friends are prepared to move on from it, we quite simply are not. Uh, and until we address that issue, I can assure you there won't be any Republican votes for a final deal until Hyde is fully uh, restored. Um, we, uh, I think, demonstrated that last year. Frankly, we're going to have to work through that issue again uh, this fiscal year. And again, I say that with no disrespect. That's just a recognition of political reality, not just in our body, but we know the Senate will not move this bill uh, absent Hyde as well. Um, as my colleagues know, the Hyde protections need to be reinstated to move forward. The majority of American people support them, and my colleagues acknowledged this when this language was retained just a few months ago uh, when uh, we completed work on the omnibus spending package. It was the right thing to do then, and in our view, it's the right thing to do now. I hope my colleagues uh, will adopt an amendment that's co-sponsored by every Republican on this committee to reinstate these policies uh, next week when we meet for a full committee markup. Uh, and that way, this bill can continue forward. Finally, the bill contains many other policy uh, provisions uh, that I find objectionable and, frankly, that will need to be modified if we can get to a final deal. But I'm hopeful that uh, some of these issues can also be addressed through the amendment process. In closing, while the bill does fund many good things, I'll be opposing it today. Price tag is still too high. The bill contains too many poison pill policy riders, uh, funding of unauthorized programs, and uh, uh, moves toward a leftist agenda uh, that we think is out of step with the American people. Having said that, again, I thank the gentlelady and her staff uh, for all the hard work, and I do pledge to work with you in good faith as the year continues. Working together, you and I have passed this bill through the Congress and avoided a continuing resolution time and time again. And it's my sincere hope and belief that we can do so yet again, Madam Chair. So I look forward to working with you in the process. And we both know it is a process. We both know it moves along the way. And frankly, our friends on the other side of the rotunda will have something to say about this as well. And uh, the President of the United States has to sign it. So he's going to have something to say. So I think uh, we're going to begin a lot of uh, good give and take, but I put high confidence in the fact that uh, working together, again, you and uh, Ranking Member Granger have uh, uh, guided us to a successful conclusion on uh, three occasions in a row now. I think you guys will make it four. If you can make it four, then our streak of uh, moves from seven to eight. Uh, and I have a vested interest in, in seeing that we continue that. So again, uh, thank you for your Kind words. Thanks for always being willing, even when we disagree, to entertain our point of view respectfully, and um, you know, and uh, give us a chance to make our case. And, and quite frankly, uh, when the time comes, uh, I, I know that uh, you will want to complete this as much as we want to complete it. I think it's very much in the interest of the country to see us work together. I would like to get this done if we can in the fiscal year, but certainly the calendar year. I don't think any of us. I believe that uh, the next Congress, uh, you know, with new members who had nothing to do with the bills, should have to deal with this. We should give them a clean slate, and honestly, we should give the administration an opportunity to move forward on their next year's priorities. So, again, I'm, my commitment to you is that uh, I will work with you every step of the way. I know that you will work with me in good faith, and uh, I hope uh, once we uh, discuss our differences, we'll find the common ground that uh, we've always been able to find before. With that, Madam Chair, I yield back.